Hi, and welcome to a panel discussion organized in recognition of Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. At AstraZeneca, we have talked a lot about the impact of COVID-19 on cancer, and new evidence has certainly indicated that referrals and testing rates across the world have reduced by as much as 80% since the start of the pandemic, and cancer diagnoses have dropped by nearly 50%. In the pandemic, health resources have been prioritized, and so sometimes testing can take a back seat to treating urgent cases that have already been diagnosed. And despite being faced with this new normal, the challenges around early cancer detection are perpetuated by the disruptive environment around us. For today's discussion, we're gonna be exploring the impact of COVID-19 on testing rates and how this has sharply declined in prostate cancer, as well as highlighting the importance of testing for men who may be at higher risk. So with that, Dr. Frank uh, Chinagunda, uh, first, welcome, and then secondly, maybe you can kick us off with what's your experience been over the recent months in terms of the impact of COVID-19 on diagnosis and testing rates in prostate cancer? The first thing to say is that the number of referrals that we would normally expect from primary care into secondary care of men with raised PSAs has fallen dramatically. There are various reasons for this, uh, for this fall. Outpatient services closed down and the urologists were redeployed. Coupled to that, a lot of the GP practices were essentially had also closed down. So even if there were men who were worried about their prostates, they didn't have anywhere anywhere to go to. And then added to that, there was, uh, uh, there was the fear that uh, men had of actually acquiring uh, COVID-19. And also there was a, a, a messaging to try and avoid hospitals. For these many reasons, the end result was that we saw far, far fewer men than, than we would expect um, in, to make the diagnosis of prostate cancer. For us in, in, in the hospital, it's too early to say what the long-term impact of that will be. In other words, are we going to be seeing more and more men presenting with advanced disease compared to say um, a year ago? So what's happening now is that men are going to see their GPs, men are getting their, their PSA blood test checked, and we are getting those referrals, and we've restarted doing prostate biopsies. Thank you, Professor Chinagunda, for laying that out for us and doing so so clearly. I'd really also now like to turn Dr. Carpton to you, while obviously some of the very basic fundamentals uh, of diagnosis and screening are being challenged by the pandemic. At the same time, we're seeing some really exciting advancements in the science uh, for prostate cancer. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the importance of effective testing as it relates to outcomes and some of the things you're excited about uh, in terms of genomics that are affecting the treatment of this disease. Uh, I think, you know, the way I look at these biomarkers and, you know, they're tools, right? They're tools for screening. Uh, there are tools to assess risk. There's tools uh, for diagnosis, tools for prognosis, as well as tools for treatment. We've historically relied on the prostate-specific antigen um, as sort of one of the primary methods uh, uh, to, to at least provide an indication on whether or not there could be a cancer. Some of the challenges are, again, the, the specificity as well as um, you know, limited prognostic value. What we need are better biomarkers. And I think that that's an active area of investigation in the, across the field of prostate cancer. And uh, now scientists are starting to take, you know, genome-wide association data, you know, across tens of thousands of patients and identify a collective group of these genetic variants. And depending on how many of those variants an individual carries, right, it can be associated with their elevated or reduced risk of, of prostate cancer, and that can have a, a number of effects. You know, without a doubt, we know that there are, uh, there have been historical and persisting disparities uh, in prostate cancer, particularly as we consider um, uh, men of, of high sub-Saharan African ancestry, otherwise black men, um, uh, and that's, you know, whether it's here in the States or in the Caribbean, uh, or in sub-Saharan Africa, right? The African diasporas, we look at men uh, across the globe, we tend to see higher rates among black men. Uh, and that, that includes incidence rates as well as death rates. And we're learning so much about this, um, the similarities and the differences so that we can ho hopefully ultimately exploit that information uh, to come up with new uh, and better ways and, and more tailored ways, right? To approach disease management. The field is ablaze right now. There's just so much activity 
uh, as we think about the molecular aspects of prostate cancer, both at the germline, the inherited level, uh, at the somatic level in the cancers, uh, and then uh, all of the mounting evidence that's, um, that's being generated around the, dis the differences that we're seeing in these cancers that are derived from black men uh, versus white men. So we're, we're, we're really excited about the prospects of uh, where this work is going. Your words and in, in, in your synopsis of, of, of everything you covered gives certainly me encouragement that we're making really good progress in prostate cancer. So Karen, I, I know you see firsthand the emotional impact of COVID-19 on men at risk or those who are already diagnosed with prostate cancer. Can you talk to us about the risks and common misperceptions that may prevent people from seeking care? I think there has always been a perception that, that men don't want to engage with the healthcare system. When COVID-19 first sent us into lockdown, um, men were contacting our specialist nurses, um, engaging in our online forums and really trying to gain support from each other in relation to, to understanding the impact that COVID-19 would have on them. And so the, the, the normal kind of traditional route through to being able to engage with um, healthcare um, really, really changed and it changed quite fundamentally. We want them to understand their risk factors and we want them to engage with the healthcare system on an understanding of that risk. And so what we've been doing is encouraging men to rethink about their risk. Um, and we have very recently developed a online risk checker. Um, it sits uh, on our website. Um, and what it enables them to do is to understand themselves being at risk or not. And it takes account of how the COVID-19 world has changed. And it talks to them about the, the fact that they'll very likely have a phone call. They may have a digital consultation. They will be able to discuss the pros and cons of the test as you need to in the UK, and then make a decision about whether it's right for them. I think it's really important that we are very clear that the PSA test is a blood test, um, that we are not um, putting off uh, men by talking about digital rectal examinations. It, we have an environment now where we can be communicating, getting those messages out, um, and really encouraging men to engage with primary care um, and also um, understand what it means if they are then referred with suspected prostate cancer. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it, Karen. And I would like to maybe come to just a wrap up of what's been a really rich panel discussion on this. I'd like to come to each of the three of you and just ask um, maybe for each of you to share if there was one call to action that you could share with the viewers as that were listening through this, what that might be. Certainly, if you have any symptoms, you should definitely be going to see your GP. But even if you haven't got symptoms, to actually find out what his PSA is, and, and uh, see his GP. I'm a full believer in PSA and it's, it has saved more lives and it's helped more men than any genetic test or any somatic mutation or anything else. The call to action is to revisit where we are with PSA testing and integrating um, you know, some of the new things that we're learning, right? That could perhaps, uh, again, augment or supplement PSA uh, in understanding risk. Men understanding their risk and taking action on that risk. Um, and, 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 and if they have symptoms, taking action on that too. We know that cancer doesn't stop during the pandemic. Um, and while we may find ourselves in a new normal, cancer has truly remained the same. And so together with the oncology community, uh, I know at AstraZeneca, we want to encourage all, all cancer patients to return to care services and to prioritize their health. And the call to action from my perspective is simple. It's don't wait, contact your doctor, get checked. And hopefully that's come through uh, from the discussion we've had today. So with that, thank you all very, very much and uh, be safe and be well.